morning and welcome to the Shack and First Monday Morning Minute. Hello, I'm Dr. Jer Shackin and today we're going to be placing two implants. I'm going to be doing one of our mini implants and one of our mono implants um, at number 10 and number 11. We're extracting number 11 and doing immediate placement. Um, for that, I've been really liking using the monos because the stability initially has been, has been very strong. So it's a wider mono. I'm using a 375 by 13. She's got about 17 millimeters of bone and she's got about, I think about nine millimeters buccal lingually, even more, about 10 millimeters buccal lingually. And then um, it is a little bit thinner on that number 10 site, but it's a healed site. So I'm gonna place a mini and be able to get all those threads inside of the bone right away. And we're gonna temporize it and we're gonna see her in a couple weeks after we're done with this. A lot of pressure. Okay. So when I like taking the canines out because you can use as big of an implant as you want usually. That canine has the best bones, the cornerstone of the mouth. So I restore it usually with a mono implant because that tooth takes a lot of force, so you can, you should put an implant in there that could take a lot of force. You gotta be very careful when you extract it so you don't take away too much bone. So I elevate it really slowly. Even if I'm feeling it move, I want it to feel like I could take it out with just the elevator. Boom. There it goes. Got a sharp cane on that root. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Turn towards me. So, I mean, this is a very strong, visible bone. It's a pretty simple case for us to be able to see the bone and, and place that implant immediately. I actually like placing implants immediately better most of the time because of that. The fact that I can visualize the bone without having to do a flap. I like to use the drill extender in this case and I like to go basically at the apex of where I took that tooth out. And I use a wider implant, a mono implant there so I can grab not only the lingual bone but also sometimes I can grab some of that buccal bone from the extraction socket and get that kind of primary, that better primary stability. Turn towards me a little bit. Turn all the way towards me, I'm sorry, thank you. Feeling around, every, every area is really good. I'm gonna go a little more mesial lingually here, but also keep that parallel because like I said, I wanna maintain that original structure of the apex. I want to be able to restore that in the same area. What's nice about the monos though is those implants are bendable. So let's say there wasn't that great bone there, but you could find some bone a little more palatally. You can bend that implant right back into to make your plane of occlusion correct. All right, so. So the monos, you know, you gotta go. At first, you gotta be, do it by hand. Just gotta find the pilot hole here. 
Can I get some suction? Mm -hmm. Hear that beep, that's a torque there. So this implant is a little off angle, so I'm gonna bring it back in. And there you go. Let's see, maybe a little more bend here. And that keeps it at that, um, the tissue level. So when you restore it, you can get that nice anatomy. I like to tap it after. That nice and solid. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to place my mini. I want to keep it pretty parallel so I don't go anywhere near that incisive canal. I like to push down to make sure I'm with solid bone here. I like to squeeze the buckle lingual when I place the implant. Hear that good beep. There's that feedback at 30 newton centimeters. Boom. There we go. Now we got a mini and a mono implant at 11 and 10. And uh, we're going to take a scan and confirm it with the CT, but everything went very smooth. Bite down for me. Okay. I'm repositioning it because uh, I went a little too buckle in this one. That's why you always take a confirmation scan. Um, but she's got plenty of bone palatal, so I'm just going to reposition it palatally a little bit. Turn towards me a little bit. So maybe I was just a little too worried about that incisive canal because I had a ton more room to go palatal still, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm leaving that pilot drill in place so I know exactly where to put the implant now. All right. 
All right, perfect. Now, I'm gonna pack it with bone, make a temper, and then Yuji here will take a, yeah, another CT scan and you can make the temp. All right, you can do the rest. Packing that canine socket with some Restore Plus, because usually when you take a canine out, you're gonna take some of that buckle bone away. Um, it was a very smooth extraction, but it just does not have all that much bone buckle-y. So I'm packing that really good. Got some of this hemostip. <coughs> Okay, a little more Restore. Yuji? Yes. Do we have any more Restore Plus? Oh, Restore Plus? Just a tiny bit for the lingual. Sure. Not as much, just wanna. There you go. Thank you. All right, perfect. Today, um, we put an implant at, at the site number 10 and an extraction implant at site number 11. We did a 3.75 by 13 mono at site number 11 and a 2.5 by 15 at site number 10. Um, she's going to heal up great. And this was your Monday morning minute.